Hey everyone, just wanted to take you for a quick tour of the new CSS Grid utilities added in the Tailwind 1.2 release. Let's dive in. We have a list of elements here, and as you can see, they are stacking on top of each other. If I make the screen wider, they just occupy the full width of their container and keep stacking. Here's the markup for it. We have an unordered list and a bunch of LI items for each card. I'll remove the spacing utility here, which was there so you could see the card a bit better. And now they are stacked right against each other. The first thing I'll do is I'll define the grid container here. Let's say we want our grid to have three columns, so I'll add grid calls three. If we save and check the result, we now have our cards arranged over a grid with three items per row. Next, we should add some spacing between these cards. I'll add a gap utility and set it to level eight. Our grid's now looking pretty good with consistent spacing between each cell. If you need different spacing between columns and rows, you can define the horizontal and vertical gaps individually. Let's go with gap X8 and gap Y12 to make it obvious. And now our grid has a bigger gap between each row. All right, let's go back to gap eight and we should now make this grid responsive. We want three columns at the medium breakpoint, so I'll prefix this with MD. We also want the gap to be at level eight only from the medium breakpoint. The base values for our grid on mobile would be grid calls one, so the cards just stack, and gap four. On the small breakpoint, we want grid calls two for two columns. And that should do it, let's check it out. Starts with a single column stack and a small gap, splits into two columns, and then three with a bigger gap. Beautiful. You can see how easy it is to build a responsive multi-column layout with CSS grid utilities. Now, let's look at some more complex scenarios. For this one, we won't worry about responsive breakpoints, so I'll remove all these classes except the gap eight, and I'll define a grid that has six columns, grid calls six, and four rows, grid rows four. So our elements only fill the first two rows, but if I pull up the dev tools here, you can see that we have a grid of six by four with cells ready to accept content. I'll color the second element with the teal 300 color, so we get a visual reference of what's happening. By default, children elements of a grid get placed in the next available cell, row by row. We can also decide to lay the elements column by column with grid flow call. Notice how our teal element is now under the first element and the flow of elements goes down the first column instead of across the first row. Let's go back to grid flow row. We'll get back to this in a minute. Up to now, we have always let the children elements of the grid occupy one cell, but we have a lot of control on where each element is placed on the grid. For example, I can tell the first element to span across two columns with call span two, and it now fills the space of the first two grid cells. This in itself is quite powerful. Let's add some call span to all elements and we'll split them like so. Two, four, then four, two, then one, two, three, two, 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 and three, three. Look at that, this is looking pretty good. You can control how elements span but also where they start. Call start four. And let me pull up the grid lines here for some context. I can use call n seven to place it at the end of the row. And also combine both start and end to make it span across a range of grid lines. I can also compose call span two with call n seven to make it span over two columns from the last grid line. Okay, let's reset all elements to use one cell again. We have seen placement controls over columns, but of course all of this is possible with rows too. Row span two will span across two rows. It can also span across two columns and two rows. Combine this with starting positions and we can create a sidebar layout. All of this is responsive, so if we prefix our class names here with LG, the teal element will use a single cell until that breakpoint, and then take over as a sidebar. 
Okay, one more thing I want to show you. Let's reset all the elements first. Say that the first element spans across four columns and the second one across three. As you can see, the teal element jumps to the next row since it cannot find enough space in the first. Now, let's color the following two elements with yellow 200. Looks like they both would fit nicely in this empty gap left in the first row, right? Let's change our class name to Grid Flow Row Dance. And now the two yellow elements will go and fill this vacant space in the grid. Same thing happens with auto flow column. If I reset all elements to one cell, flip the flow to call, and make the teal element span across four rows, there is now a gap. That gap can be filled by the two yellow elements plus one more with the grid flow call dance class name.